Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're gonna to talk about Bitcoin, back to the basics. We're gonna be doing a dive into how do you use TradingView and how do we use it to analyze Bitcoin? This is gonna be very different from most of the videos that I do. Instead of presenting a lot of quantitative analysis that I think is important, I'm basically just gonna show you how to pull up a Bitcoin chart and pull up very elementary indicators. So this is not going to be useful for a lot of people, but because there are a decent number of people that are new to the space, I'm hoping that they will at least find it useful. So if you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel and give the video a thumbs up. Also check out the Telegram channel, which you can find a link to in the description below. Let's go ahead and jump in. So the first thing you should do, if you wanna follow along, if you're new, go to tradingview.com, okay? Once you go there, you can, you can search for things up in this upper bar. If you wanna look up Bitcoin, you just type in BTC USD, and then you'll see a lot of different exchanges where you can track Bitcoin. And if you click on it, it'll take you to this page here, where you can generally see a lot of the different exchanges. You can see Bitstamp and Coinbase and, and, and so on and so forth. And you can also go to ideas and see what people are thinking, you know, what they, what sort of they, see playing out for Bitcoin in the short term. Uh, but more importantly, you can go to this full feature chart. Okay, so you click on that, and then it brings this up. Okay, and the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna remove everything so that we're not, you know, we're not assuming that you know how to use this at all. Now, there's actually, in my opinion, a more useful way to look at the, the Bitcoin price. A lot of times I'll look at the BLX, which is the Brave New Coin Liquid Index for Bitcoin. And the reason is because it goes back further in time. It goes all the way back to 2010. However, there's a new, a new way you can look up the, these prices, and that's if you type in index and then colon Bitcoin USD. And you click this. And this one's better than the BLX, in my opinion, because it actually shows the live price of Bitcoin. And you can look at things on shorter time frames. The BLX, the BLX will go to a daily time frame, but it will not say look at hourly time frames or, or anything like that. And looking at this one does allow you to do that. So I would recommend switching over to the weekly view. Okay. Now, what do you do from here? Right now, you now you have the price of Bitcoin up. Now what? Right. Where do you go? Well, one of the things you can do is you can pull up some indicators and you go up here to the top, you click on indicators. And if you go to public library, you can scroll through tons of indicators that you can use to try to analyze Bitcoin. Now, some of them might be, you know, tailor made for a very specific, specific thing. But a lot of these indicators, um, of course, they have very different purposes. Now, what if you just want to look at a moving average? Well, you just type in moving average and ignore the thing that says my scripts because I've created some scripts myself. But if you just go to say the built-ins, one of the things you can do is you note, here's moving average. So you just click on it. You can also just type in, rather than spelling it out, you can just type in MA and, and, and it should come up. And then you just click on it. And then you see this line pop up. Now, what does this line mean? Well, if you click, if you go over here and hover above it, first of all, if you click the I button, you can hide it at will, right? You can just hide it if you want to. If you click settings, one of the things you can do is you can click on this and make it a brighter color, maybe you see you can see it and make the line thicker so that it shows up a little bit better. That This is how I usually present the charts to you guys so that you can actually make out the, the, the moving average. If you go to inputs, it says the length, okay? And here, it's, it's, you can see it's defaulted to nine, meaning this is the nine week moving average. If you wanna change it to say the 200 week moving average, you just type in 200. And you can, you can talk about what your source is, whether it's the close, whether it's the open, whatever you want. You can also change the indicator time frame, okay? Meaning, you know, do you want it to be the weekly? Do you want it to be the daily, right? If you want it to be the daily, then you can show, you can show the daily on the weekly um, on the on the weekly chart, um, and this would be say like the 200 day moving average. If you want to show the 20 day moving average, you would just do that. But if you just want it to be the same as the chart, you could just do something like this. Say, okay, I want it to be the same as the chart. And what does that mean, the same as the chart? Well, what it means is if, if this is the 200 and it's the same as the chart, if this little 
letter up here says W, it means it's a weekly moving average. Okay, if you change it to one day, now it becomes the, uh, the 200 day moving average. It's no longer the weekly moving average, it's the daily moving average. And again, the way to make it so that it doesn't change as the chart time frame changes is you can just keep this over here. You can maybe change this to a week. And even if you're looking at the daily time frame, you can still see what it is on the week. Of course, you can always just change what this is. For instance, if you want this to be the 20, you know, the 20 day, you just go over here and you make it the 20 day. Okay, something like this. So there's a lot of ways that you can play with it and you can pull up a lot of moving averages. Now, if you want to pull up more than one moving average, you just go back over here. You, you can just type in MA again, you pull up another moving average and you just do the same exact thing. You come over here, you say, now I want the, the 100 week moving average and I'm going to make it a different color. And you pull it up and there, or this is on the daily time frame, and you pull it up and there it is. Now you have the, you know, you have two moving averages and so on and so forth. Okay, so this is a pretty rudimentary way to just pull up simple moving averages. And you might say, well, why are moving averages important? Well, generally speaking, you know, they're not necessarily important, but sometimes you get these trends where you'll find a certain asset respects certain moving averages at certain phases of the cycle. For instance, in bear markets, Bitcoin tends to hold the 200 week moving average as support on the weekly time frame so far. This historically is among the best times to buy Bitcoin. We've been saying it for a long time, even in March, it dipped below it, and it actually had a wick all the way down in fact, to the 300 week moving average. And things were pretty scary, um, but ultimately we bounced back up and we continued along the way, okay? So this is why moving averages can be important. Another thing that you can look at, you can look at things like the RSI, the Relative Strength Index. If you just type in RSI, you can find it over here. Sometimes it can be hard to see, so you can click on this and maybe you know maybe change the color or whatnot um, to something that shows up a little bit better and change the thickness click OK and the same thing more or less applies right you can you can change it so that it's the same it's the same time frame as the chart you can change it to other time frames like if you just want it to only be the weekly RSI even if you're looking at the daily chart you can do that um, but the, the 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 cool thing about this is that you know, if you just want to keep it at the same as the chart, you can quickly look at the weekly RSI. You can switch it over to say the monthly RSI and, and just continue looking at it. And, and this would be an indication of, okay, we recognize that the market's getting somewhat heated because in the past, this weekly RSI has only gone to this level up here four times more or less in the past, and we are approaching it relatively quickly. So these are ways that you can analyze the price of Bitcoin on TradingView using say moving averages and the relative strength index. These are obviously among the most simple things that you can use, but there are a lot of people that have not been exposed to this stuff before. That's not a problem. There's a first time for everything. Hopefully this video is an informative to you and at least beginning to understand how you can use this to analyze various, various cryptocurrencies. And you can also switch it over to say Ethereum if you want, and then you can go look at Ethereum and the indicator you can see this is the RSI for Ethereum on the monthly time frame. Hopefully this has been useful. I really do hope you guys enjoy the content. I know it's different than what I normally cover on the channel, but if it's, if it's at least useful to one person, right, and one person is now able to navigate TradingView and they weren't in the past, then I think it was worth it. So if you guys like the content, subscribe to the channel. Let's go for 250,000 subscribers. Give the video a thumbs up. Check out the Telegram channel. We can also, um, I'll also ask you to, to click on the bell icon to turn your alerts on. Check out the premium list as well. You can find a link to the altcoin season sale in the description below. We'll end that in about five days. Make sure you guys sign up for it. It comes with a whole lot of stuff, weekly reports and videos, the Telegram alerts channel, the Telegram chat room, the Into the Cryptoverse app, the Risk dashboard, and more. A lot more. Make sure you guys check it out. Thank you guys for tuning in. Subscribe. I'll see you next time. Bye.